man, oh man, am I so excited to talk about this show. It's kind of interesting because it feels like this kind of came out of nowhere. It was a Peacock original. Where I live in the world, we don't have Peacock, so we're streaming on another platform. And it was like, okay, how is this actually going to go? Because I don't know if this show's concept works in 2023. Truth be told, Poker Face is probably one of the most interesting shows to come out of recent memory. I could probably spend all day talking about it and the complexities that go into it, why it exists, why it's such an anomaly in 2023, but we're going to break it down a little bit and talk about Poker Face, an incredible piece of television that really doesn't feel like it's of this era. That is like the greatest strength of this program. It doesn't feel like any other television on TV right now or on streaming. Where I watch this, it's kind of connected to actual television, so you could like watch it on cable and stuff like that, but it is a streaming show that doesn't feel like it belongs on streaming. You still haven't heard about Poker Face. I don't know where you've been, because it's kind of been like the talk of Twitter for a while now. This is a show written and some of it directed by Ryan Johnson, who's coming off of a successful run of whodunit movies with Knives Out and Glass Onion. He said, what if I made that kind of premise for television? And this is what he did. He gave us Natasha Lyonne as the lead character of Charlie. She is this woman, kind of just like a little bit of degenerate, going around the, the states. And she has a little thing she can do. She has this little quirk, this little gift, that she can tell if somebody is lying or not. Whatever they say, she knows if it's true or if it's false. What a simple premise for television. And that is a premise that works for television because with that you need nothing else this isn't a show about a huge supporting cast coming in to do filler it's one girl going to different towns different cities different states across america and just not even solving a crime just experiencing a moment where somebody gets hurt or somebody gets killed and she coincidentally helps solve the crime or fix the murder or all that kind of stuff it's kind of brilliant it's very subtle, very creative, and a show that doesn't feel like it would work today. So much about this is, is genius. Just the structure where it's just this feels like Columbo. It feels like the littlest hobo. Here's just, you know, some person living on the streets, a homeless woman in essence who lives out of her car, going from place to place, getting an odd job here or there, and then helps the people in the story. That's all this is, and it works magic. It's surprisingly creative incredibly original while still feeling like classic television that is the thing about this i do not understand how this show can implement so many modern ideas like modern technologies the use of phones the use of podcasts the use of everything that you do online and how you stream and how you view content and how you create stuff it's so modern but it feels timeless in a way that no other show really does the way it just plays of today's technology gives it a feel that this could have existed in the 70s or the 80s or the 90s and that is such an original thing to say so creative in that aspect and an incredibly original like structure for a story we start off pretty much in the middle of the story for every episode and then we go back to see how charlie is connected to it it shouldn't work as well as it does and every time you watch it you're like oh Episode 8, you think you have it figured out what's actually going to happen, and then boom, it changes it up for you. And you're just watching it like, wait, I thought because she was connected to this person, it would have went this way. But no, it swaps itself and does something completely original. How rare is that to see in television where a standalone episode surprises you in ways you're not expecting? How cool and creative is that? Natasha Lyonne, an actress I know passingly, I've never been a huge fan of her work. I've liked a lot of it. But she, to me, wasn't like the selling point of this show. When I first heard about it, I was like, okay, Ryan Johnson's doing some television stuff. What's that going to look like? Instantly, she became this amazing, iconic character who fits right in with the pantheon of like those like big Lebowski adjacent detectives, your Columbo detectives, just a character you can recognize. She has an iconic voice, an iconic way about her, the way she talks, the way she presents herself. It's so iconic. And it's kind of cool to see her get put through the ringer. She goes through hell and back in this show. Literally moments where you think she's going to die. Literally moments where she gets beaten up beyond belief. She goes through a lot of stuff in this. And there's just like so much interesting developments. And none, through none of it does she go, 
maybe I'm the problem. You know, I keep coming up to these like weird events that happen to me, but she's just a good person trying to get by, helping out people in weird situations. It's incredibly original, and every single episode feels entirely unique. There are so many specific moments for each one. I'm not going to like rank rank them or rate them or anything, but this ones that kind of stand out to me is the ones I really liked. The pilot is really well done, a very strong pilot. There's an episode about hippies living in an old folks home. That's really funny. There's one where Tim Meadows is like a stage actor and it's hilarious. There's one where Nick Nolte, Nick Nolte is like a Harry Housen creator with like stop motion and stuff. And you're like, what is happening? Why, why is this so interesting to look at? And why is this working so well? It shouldn't be working so well, right? Like this isn't a concept that should hold up in 2023. Just this kind of whodunit story at a simple budget like this, it feels low stakes and low scale throughout every single iteration, but you're just so impressed of everything. The writing is so sharp. The characters are so sharp. So many surprising actors appear in this. Like I said, Nick Nolte's in here. We have two Oscar nominated women in this show. Hong Sho and Stephanie Su both show up in this show. Jamila Jamil shows up. John Ratzenberger shows up. Joseph Gordon-Levitt shows up. You're like, why is there so many people in this show when she could just easily be interacting with random people? I don't, I don't get it. But it's kind of brilliant because then it adds stakes to it because these are named actors that we're familiar with. They deal some real interesting situations. It is such a specific concept that feels so old school and it's just such a cool thing to have a show dealing with today's stuff you know the, the toxicity of the news program how does it feel to be a man in a certain part of the world and all that kind of stuff what's right what's wrong the way it delves into like weird podcasting things having that experience feel timeless and feel old school where this could be an episode of like your favorite show from back in the day it's kind of impressive that it holds up that well such an interesting piece. I, again, there's something about this that is so specific and interesting to dive into. And it might just be like, maybe we're just starved for this type of content. We're so used to things being dragged out and we're having multiple slower arcs going to places. So when it's like, here is 50 minutes of a girl dealing with some weird racing shenanigans, we just snap in and we enjoy it right away. It just makes it so easy and fun. Such an interesting idea that worked so well. I I, th I know the buzz is really good on this show, but still it feels like it's kind of like this niche object where maybe some younger people are hesitant to get into it because what is this? What, what is she doing? She's doing a Lebowski where she is just kind of like smarter than the person in the room, doesn't think she should get involved, but kind of does sometimes. And it leads to some very devastating moments, some really cool revelations. No one moment feels the same as the last in the structure of the show just makes you think you're smarter than the show, but it's smarter than you, which is a really rare thing to see in television these days. And the fact it's on Peacock is very surprising because it does feel like it deserves more than Peacock because who has Peacock, to be honest? But we got a second season, which was great to see. Ryan Johnson is still actively involved in the show, which is great to see. Natasha Lyonne, one of her best performances. I would say her best because... The physical stuff she has to do in this is impressive. The way she, like, <laughs> plays off with some people hitting on her sometimes is really funny. And just being, like, that cool babe who shows up, just smokes a cigarette. It looks awesome. Iconic. She fits right into the iconic line. It's unbelievable how this worked and, and how it's still strong and how I'm still excited to see more of it. The fact that it's like, oh, a second season? What other crazy shenanigans can we get up to? What else are we going to do with her? This woman who knows if you're lying or not. There's a whole list of stuff to go in there, but it's not that much. And the fact that like there is a through line narrative that isn't explored in every single episode, that's cool. Because you could call it filler, but I'm like, no, we're just looking at good actors with good writing and good directing telling a story in 50 minutes. What more do you want? It's Poker Face. It's subtly creative and brilliant one of the coolest shows on television and perfectly old school that it makes everything awesome so check it out so poker face season one i am going to give a nine out of ten now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Hive. And I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.